Welcome, Age of Vintage Society. The life of Judy Lewis was so unusual that it was easily presentable as a mystery tale. She was raised by Loretta Young. Clark Gable was her father. Then why did she spend her first 19 months in orphanages? And then spent the rest of her early years uncovering a series of lies ingrained by her young mother, all because she was afraid of losing her stardom. Why Clark Gable's daughter, Judy Lewis, suffered from her identity. Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you are new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Judy Lewis is best known for being the love child of two of the biggest stars of Hollywood's golden age, Clark Gable and Loretta Young. She was also a successful actress and television producer and later became a licensed youth counsellor. Not surprisingly, Judy Lewis lived in the luxuries of her mother's movie star lifestyle while growing up in Los Angeles. However, what made her story gloomy was the fact that she was clueless about her identity for 31 years of her life. Then how did she finally discover the truth after having to endure so much pain? You will get to know all about her heartbreaking journey in this video. So the story began in 1935 when Gable and Young came to be acting as Jack Thornton and Claire Blake in Call of the Wild. Young was 22 years old and Gable was 34 at the time. In addition to being 12 years older than Young, Gable was also wed to Rhea Langham, his second wife. But don't you believe that age is just a number when you are madly in love? Yes, that was exactly what happened to Gable and Young. Gable was the most well-liked male actor on the screen who had recently been nominated for an Oscar for his role in It Happened One Night. Young, who had begun her career as an extra in silent movies when she was just four years old, was ready to play the lead role in the religious drama The Crusades. She had officially signed to 20th Century Fox. Both of them sound quite successful. Well, they really were. Because they were both ferociously ambitious, they didn't want to take any risks. Given the moral context of the day, news of their affair and baby would have destroyed both stars' careers. Despite being in love, they decided to protect their careers anyhow. The Crusades, an epic picture directed by Cecil B. DeMille, was shot while Young was pregnant. She completed her work and travelled to Europe for a vacation, but in fact Young, a fervent Catholic, was using that to conceal her pregnancy. When she returned, she spent most of her time at home and claimed that she was tired out from her trip to Europe and needed to relax. In November 1935, she gave birth to a daughter who was given the name Judith Young on her birth certificate. So, was it time to reveal the truth? Not at all. Probably she already had a plan in her mind. Maybe that's why she immediately sent her newly born daughter to a Catholic orphanage while she prepared her next step. Lewis unfortunately resided in shelters and orphanages for around 19 months. After that, Young contacted tabloid writer Luella Parsons to let her know she was attempting to adopt two girls from a Catholic orphanage. Lewis, her own daughter, was the only child she ultimately adopted. She later claimed that the second adoption procedure had failed. The adoption was only a smokescreen, according to Lewis, who detailed her parents and childhood in her 1994 memoir, Uncommon Knowledge, because Young assumed no one would suspect the girl was actually her biological daughter. Young's plan was ultimately completed before the 1930s came to an end. Nobody knew what actually happened when she successfully adopted her biological daughter, but it was just how she believed. Why? Because the kid had Gable's wide mouth and especially large ears, just like Gable. In response to a question about whether the rumours were real, Call of the Wild director William Wellman said, All I know is that Loretta and Clark were super friendly during the film, and it was quite cold up there. After the filming was over, she briefly vanished before arriving back with a daughter who had big ears. Young tried her best to hide any indications of her daughter's origin out of fear that her secret would become public. Lewis isn't seen in any photographs up to two. Up until age seven, photos portray her wearing a bonnet. As she grew older, Lewis remarkably resembled Gable from having ears that protruded in the same way. 
Lewis writes in her book about being perplexed by her constant ear-covering bonnets. My mother emphasised how important it was for me to always cover my ears when I was in public. I started to believe that I was abnormal. When she was seven years old, she told her mother that schoolmates teased her about having ears that protruded like Dumbo's, or, according to Hollywood tales, they protruded like Clark Gable's ears did. She then had surgery to have her ears shaped flat. The doctor had warned her mother that such a procedure was quite painful. He advised waiting till she was older. She pushed, though. Lewis wasn't aware of Young's overall scheme of things, but many people in the entertainment business had reason to think that she was Gable and Young's biological kid. Lewis's high school buddy, Jack Haley Jr., claimed that even her circle of friends had heard the rumour from their parents. Our entire group knew who her parents were, and we knew she didn't know, Haley Jr. said. However, we believed her mother would tell her. Lewis's pals had been told not to let her know about her parental status, even though it was widely known in Hollywood. Despite numerous speculations, Young was resistant to admitting the reality until Lewis was in her thirties in 1966 after Gable's death. Despite all those ongoing stressful rumours, Lewis maintained to be an ambitious girl. She pursued a career in acting after graduating from a Catholic girls' school by appearing on Broadway and television. In 1957, she made her acting debut in New York with a little part in Craft Television Theatre. Lewis had been in TV series like General Hospital, Kitty Foyle, The Brighter Day, and The Doctors, among others. From 1964 through to 71, Lewis played Susan Ames in The Secret Storm, which was her longest-running serial. Texas, a short-lived Another World spin-off, was also produced by her. Lewis appeared as a guest star in the 1958 episode of Mackenzie's Raiders, a syndicated Western series starring Richard Carlson, titled Attack. She appeared in Grant Sullivan's syndicated Western series Pony Express as a guest star. In the 1960 episode Tiger Blood of the syndicated television show, the Blue Angels, Lewis played the girlfriend of a U.S. Navy officer. She played Connie Masters, a worker at the Wells Fargo branch in Stillwater, Oklahoma, in the NBC Western series The Outlaws. Tiffany was her character for a year on Broadway in the smash comedy Mary Mary by Jean Kerr. She made a brief appearance in the CBS family drama Three for the Road. She co-wrote a number of Search for Tomorrow episodes that won a Writers Guild of America award in 1985. But despite all of her success, she also had some tragic times in her life. Prior to her wedding, Miss Lewis was having an internal conflict when she received the first hint about her parents. She first met Joe Tinney, a television director, in 1958, and the two were engaged to be married when Lewis revealed her doubts about her parents. She was 23 at that time. She wrote in her autobiography, I grew up surrounded by rumours that Clark Gable was my father. Even my closest friends knew who my parents were, but no one dared to tell me. My future spouse did not reveal who my father was to me until the evening before our wedding. I had confessed to him that I had doubts about my mother's paternity and that I didn't know who my father was. Then he declared, I know, Judy, it's common knowledge. Clark Gable is your father. Twenty-three years had passed and everyone in the world knew who I was, except for me. Then I cried, and I have been crying for most of my life. Judy then underwent years of treatment. She was truly devastated. So what should she have done at that point? Confronting her mother? Surprisingly, Lewis didn't directly question her mother if that was true for another eight years, and when she confronted her, Young acknowledged the truth and gave an explanation of the deception. She remarked, He was your father. He was adorable, sweet and extremely kind. He was married, so when I found out I had you, I was horrified and in a panic. A scandal like that would have destroyed our careers for both of us. Are you wondering about Lewis's reaction? It was much more than Young expected, because in 1994 Judy Lewis published a book in which she described her upbringing and her mother's complicated attitude toward revealing the truth. Young continued to deny her story publicly, even after Lewis released the book. 
She even went so far as to claim that she chose not to pay any further attention to the rumours that she was Lewis's real mother, since they were the result of a bygone time. It is worth noting that Young was the only one except Lewis who could provide insight into the matter. After Gable passed away in November 1960 from an arterial blood clot, that proved fatal following a heart attack. She only once met her father, according to her memoirs, even if at the time she only knew him as a well-known actor she had seen in the movies. He was waiting for her in the corridor when she got back from school at the age of 15. She tells how he quizzed her about her hobbies, schoolwork and her friends as they were sitting on the couch side by side. She didn't know he was her father, but he kissed her on the forehead before he went. She discovered many years later that her mother had set up the meeting so that Gable could meet with his daughter. I cry when I see his movies, she claimed. Why didn't he come to my rescue on a white horse? In a scene from Gone with the Wind, Gable plays adoringly with his made-up daughter, Lewis remarked. I like to assume that he was thinking of me when he was acting those parts. She went on to say that perhaps the famous line, Frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn, was a better representation of how he felt about her. Though the truth was not easy to absorb, Judy Lewis somehow seemed philosophical about the secret she grew up in throughout her interviews following the publication of her book. She claimed that both Young and Gable would have had their careers destroyed if they had acknowledged her in 1935. Lewis also mentioned in her memoir, In Modern Hollywood, the position they were in in 1935 would not have been as problematic. Leonard Maltin, a film critic and Hollywood historian, also backed up what Young did in light of the circumstances. He stated, The public had no idea that Loretta Young had done this at the time. Thus, what she did was totally successful. It preserved her prominence and upstanding reputation as a young lady. Young's strategy undoubtedly saved her and Gable's careers because, in the 1930s, having an affair and a love kid would have led to cancelled contracts and blacklisting. Lewis's life, however, was very gloomy. Despite having a privileged upbringing in her mother's Beverly Hills house, Lewis said that she always felt like an outsider with no true identity. Lewis acknowledged that it was sad that Young continued to refer to her, her biological daughter, as a rumour. Being rejected or unacknowledged by my mother as a young child was always incredibly tough for me, because she still refuses to openly acknowledge that I am her biological child. Young always avoided Lewis's questions regarding her biological mother and the reasons why she had put her up for adoption. Young would respond, he's dead, when questioned about her father. Because of this, Lewis was only ever half a person, and writing her biography became her means of claiming her parents. Unfortunately, Young and Lewis's estrangement was also a result of the publication. When she learned that her daughter was considering writing a memoir, Young was so upset that she didn't talk to Lewis for three years. It was the most struggling time in her life, according to Edward Funk, the author of three books about Young's life. When Young eventually got in touch with Lewis to make things right, Lewis accepted, but their relationship had already suffered too much to be repaired. Just before her death, Young told Funk that Lewis was, in fact, her biological daughter. She revealed the truth in her authorised biography, Forever Young, but she asked that it be released after her passing. The whole tale was finally made known when Joan Wester Anderson's authorised biography was released not long after Young passed away in 2000. Lewis, who left the entertainment industry to study clinical psychology at Antioch University in Los Angeles, graduated with a bachelor's and a master's degree during this time. Later, she moved to Los Angeles and started working as a psychotherapist. The girl who used to go for psychotherapy was now herself a psychotherapist. Maybe it was the pain of years that made her stronger. She specialised in marriage therapy, foster care and counselling for unmarried mums. Probably she wished for no more unacknowledged daughters like hers in the world. Around that time, Lewis was divorced and had two grandsons and one daughter, Maria. Lewis, a psychotherapist and actress, passed away from lymphoma in Gladwin, Pennsylvania in November 2011. Her daughter, three half-brothers and her partner, Steve Rowland, were her surviving family members.
It is impossible to estimate how different Gable, Young and Lewis's lives would have been if Gable and Young had always accepted her as their biological child. Do you think things could have been different? Share your thoughts in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. You can't choose who your parents are. Judy Lewis's mother was lying all along, but there are worse things than that. Why Gypsy Rose Lee had to grow up with a parasite? Watch this video.